How many of you are feeling that nostalgia swimming up through your plums? Swimming up in your belly. Look you at this in that? our kitchen. I know, standing beside each other. And we're going to talk about culture today, ladies and gentlemen. If you're new to our channel, yeah. we used to do this segment in Korea called TLDRs, which meant too long, didn't read. What we're going to talk about today are some common misperceptions we've seen about Japan. Mm -hmm. So we want to kind of talk about those and dispel them as much as we can. Dispel them. Dispel it. Also, we got so much Rontonians, Raptors, number one! I like how you got Lowry because he's the short one. Okay, and... well, I didn't get him because he's the short one. It's because he put his body on the line for the Raptors, and I loved watching him play. Second Talking F about Siakam. Japan, not Toronto. Siakam, like, is hot, and then maybe Van Vliet. Kawhi can come near a little bit near Kawhi, the we don't say that name in, in this household <laughs> anymore. First misconception that we need to dispel is this idea that you need to learn Japanese when you come to Japan. We just don't believe that at all. It's in the least bit. Yeah, recently we came back from visiting Spain. Uh, yep. And before that last year we went to Italy. Right. Uh, and we did not take a crash course on suddenly learning Italian and Spanish just to go visit a country for vacation. It's an unreasonable expectation. Japan has like 30 million visitors a year. I think mm -hmm. it's the 11th most visited country in the world. In the world. You're expecting 30 million people to have a working knowledge of the language before coming here? That's unreasonable. I really wish I was a genius and could learn the language. I'll be amazing. If I could, I would. If I was a vampire, mm -hmm. I would spend so much time learning languages. If I was a vampire, learn how to DJ. <gasps> That'd be amazing. Right? The DJ of the night. DJ, suck your butt. <laughs> <laughs> Demonetized! Oh. <laughs> so just to ease your mind a little bit more about this, because Japan is such a visited country, especially like, you know, Tokyo and Kyoto, and like, mm. they know that visitors are coming. We've seen a million different types of menus available. There's ones that are in Japanese, they have English, they have Chinese, we've seen Russian, we've seen just tons of languages. Many! Back around the years of 2008, when we lived mm. in Korea, it wasn't really that used to accommodating foreigners yet. It was still pretty new. The tourism boom hadn't yeah. really kicked off, and a lot of people People were like, what are, what what are you, you doing here? Why are you here? It's kind of like if someone walks into your house and you're yeah. like, hey, you're, why, why are you here? I remember the first few times that we would start uh, riding the bus. Mm -hmm. The buses were completely in Korean. So they yeah. didn't tell you like the stop name in English, nor mm -hmm. did they show the sign. So mm -hmm. you had to learn Korean so fast. And when you saw another foreigner on the street, you would literally go like this. <gasps> oh, and you'd like run at each other and you'd always like, greet them and say hi, like, I'm Martina, What are you I'm doing here? Like, oh, well, yeah, I'm new here, you're new here, what are we doing? Yeah, but you know, it changes is the mm -hmm. point, is that things, cities grow and they change. And so mm -hmm. Korea now can definitely handle a lot more tourism coming in. Yep. I'm sure if you go to a shop, they're no longer like, I can't speak English, oh or like, God. they're just kind of yeah. like, so what, it's a foreigner. And, and we see that comfort here, you know? Yeah, in Japan, especially in Tokyo, there's not that discomfort mm. with foreigners. There's yeah. none of that fear, none of that shock. You can definitely get by without speaking Japanese here. And one rule of thumb is that this rule never applies to any countryside anywhere in the world. No. If you go to the Korean countryside, yeah, have fun. If you go it. to the Japanese countryside, they're going to be like, cooked. what the heck? But like, if you're in the major tourist destination of the yeah. city, like Tokyo is a really Huge big city, city, you're definitely going to be fine. That being said, we always think it's great to learn a little bit of the language, mm -hmm. especially if you're trying to like unlock something a little bit special, right? For sure. Like you guys have heard us talk a lot about going to ramen shops like on our podcast, mm -hmm. and these ramen shops don't have a lick of English to them. Nope. And the machines are vending machines where they're all in kanji. So in that case, it can be a bit more of like a fun gamble, like right. what am I ordering? Yeah. And we did that a lot when we visited Japan when we lived in Korea. Sure. Right? But even if you don't know what you're reading there, even if you pick something yeah. from a vending machine or ramen shop, it's gonna be amazing. It's gonna be amazing. It's gonna be really good. So you don't have to worry about messing yeah. up. But if you're like, ooh, I really feel like having a little bit of this, yeah. or I feel like having a little bit of that, then learning some of the language is gonna help out. We're not trying to discourage you from learning yeah, Japanese before coming here. If you want to, by all means, go right ahead. But don't feel like you have to. Don't yeah. put that pressure on yourself. Don't feel like, oh, I can't I come can't here. Come, unless right. No, it's gonna be accommodating for you. So be a little bit kinder to yourself. You're gonna have a good time. It's gonna be a great vacation. Now, apart from trying to ease these exaggerated expectations you have of yourself, we want to address people crushing certain expectations before you come to Japan. Falsely at that. We see some people say, oh, Japan isn't all anime and manga and Pikachu and Pokemon. Don't expect to come here and find people dressed weird. Now, of course, Japanese businessmen and Japanese businesswomen aren't walking around wearing anime costumes yeah. and throwing chains at each other and tossing Pokeballs. Throwing chains? Like if you're in like 
like some kind of anime. She said anime ninja character. stars of swords. Oh, well, chains. I read mangas. I don't know. They have different They beat kinds people of... with chains? Yes. I want to <laughs> see. I'm calling you out oh, on this no, shit. Oh, no, you don't. All right. Mm -mm. What manga do they beat each other with chains? Write it down in the comments. Write it down in the comments. You're expecting them to bail you out. They're not gonna bail me out. <laughs> they know. The point is, everybody knows, even if you haven't visited Japan, that Japanese businessmen and women wear normal clothing and Regular grandmothers clothes. wear normal clothing. Like mm -hmm. people aren't running around actually cosplaying all the time. The reason why people feel excited to visit Japan for pop culture is because it's something that they had in their country, mm -hmm. but it wasn't on the full scale. It was mm -hmm. imported into their country. And only right? in small specialty shops. Like, like for us, in, and when we were growing up at least, like yeah. manga was not as available as it is now. Right. Like, I had to go to like a specific mall all the way in Brampton because it was the only uh, comic book store right. that imported manga. Driving all the way to Marco for Pacific Mall yeah. to get some of that stuff, that was a journey. It was a journey. Yeah. And so, pardon me, mm -hmm. if when I come to Japan, yeah. there's just a bookstore loaded with all of this kind of stuff that I enjoy to read. And it's not like they made that shop for tourists. It's a Japanese store because people really do love manga here. People really they dig do Sailor the Moon. There's yes. Sailor Moon fan clubs and concerts. Why are you wearing that wig? I'm not wearing a wig. I came, I came this way. I'm modern Sailor Moon. What are you doing as modern Sailor Moon? I'm going to the Sailor Moon 20th anniversary fan club party by myself. I am Sailor Moon number 1789. I got my single serving ticket into the event. I need to open up everything and touch everything. I have like an hour to kill now before the event starts. Oh my god, oh my god. you will find it here in Japan a lot easier than you will outside of Japan. Which makes just so much sense. Imagine coming to a country to yeah. get stuff from the country that makes it. Like, why is this such an offensive thing to people? I like, mean, there are people that travel to France because they want to learn how to be chefs. Mm -hmm. Does that mean that every single person in France is walking around with a baguette and a chef's knife? No, obviously not. We're not setting up that straw man. And you shouldn't think that about Japan as well. Mm -hmm but it is commonly available. It's a lot easier to get here. So if you do want to come here for anime or for manga or for Sailor Moon or for whatever the hell you want to come here for, don't let anybody shame you for that, all right? right? You got this nerd so mad. Do you okay. hear him? He's like literally yelling at a camera right now. Look here, Sony A7 III. I'm sick of your sh okay? There's nothing wrong with liking Final Fantasy. <laughs> Not the only reason, but one of the things that really drew me to Japan is I love Final Fantasy. It's my sh**. All right. What's, What's this, Simon? Right. This is an old Final Fantasy uh -huh. cup noodle set with Sephiroth on it. Yeah. Because he's like, we'll just keep one or two. What's this? It's a tiny bowl of ramen. It's a tiny Always bowl of ramen. Always wanted to get those when I was in Japan. Yes. What's this? It's Pikachu. It's he's Pikachu. wearing a very small beret because this is special limited edition Pikachu with the beret. Oh wait, we got this in Japan, didn't we? we? Did. Because it's so easily available here. Oh, Godzilla. Oh my gosh, no, there can't yeah, be Godzilla stuff. We did. You go to that theater in Shinjuku yeah. and there's a Literal huge Godzilla, Godzilla yeah. there. Hot tip for those of you that want to nerd out the way that we do when we came here. Just because it is easily available here doesn't mean that it's equally distributed. Yeah. There are some pockets in which it's a lot easier for you to find if you really want to totally geek out. <laughs> Our number one choice is actually Nakano Broadway and mm -hmm. that's actually West Side Tokyo, like where we are. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people don't go there because it's out of their hotel area mm -hmm. because they're mm -hmm. used to staying downtown on the core. Right. A lot of people go to Akihabara instead, which mm -hmm. I'm sure you've heard of that. Mm -hmm. But for us, Nakano Broadway has a lot more like vintage things. You can find collectibles and plastic toys. And there's like a really dope camera section. Right. That's where you always go to get your stuff. Whenever sure. you walk in, they're like this guy again. I go to Nakano Broadway for the camera stuff. Now Akihabara, the one that you have undoubtedly heard of before, mm -hmm. it actually has a lot more uh, new and modern stuff. So if you're really into like manga and anime culture and you're up to date on it, like you're not like me who's like, I'm looking for Sailor Moon stuff from the <laughs> It's like, right. if you're actually looking for something modern, Akihabara is gonna have Please. it. Hey, you shut it. <laughs> Just like olden days when memers would meow through all of our TLDRs. Hopefully you can't hear them from now and microphones have gotten better. I... It's hard to focus with a meowing cat. Yes, the doctor. Hey, on YouTube channel. Get your own camera. There are many different things you could do here. Japan is very, very diverse with lots of different subcultures in it. Arcades. 
tons of arcades. Oh my gosh, like lots like of different towers, things. Like a tower in Akihabara that has mm. just like old fashioned arcades. We met a guy at one of our favorite coffee shops because he wanted to come to Japan just for a coffee experience. So, so cool. he, he had his little map and he went to a whole bunch of different coffee shops. Sure, not everybody in Japan is as into coffee as he was, but that is his little pilgrimage. So whatever you want to do here in Japan, <laughs> you follow your vision. There's not one right way to experience yeah. it. There's not one right version of Japan. Fly that free fly. Find the things that you like and pursue that. Japan's a great place for you. And it's time for the Simon and Martina nerdy quiz. What is something, Simon, about Japan that's really nerdy that you absolutely love? I love how much they love jeans here. What? Like there's some shops that really take denim super duper seriously. I know what you're speaking about. I'm not that into jeans myself, yes. but I love seeing the passion that they have and I'm amazed at how expensive some of them are. Another misconception about Japan is that people only eat Japanese food here. For example, I might meet somebody at a store in Canada and they say to me, you know, oh, what's it like? Like, do you have sushi for breakfast? Like they don't really understand the types of foods available in Japan. And, mm -hmm. and that's fair, I suppose, because sure. they did not subscribe to our YouTube videos. Right. Where if they had smashed and liked that subscribe button, they would have learned a lot They'd about be Japanese food. so much food. better informed. Now we're not mad or annoyed or anything that people think that people in Japan eat Japanese food. That's right. totally fine. Of course. What we're mad about is that you guys might miss out on some really good foreign food. Right. Now this sounds very weird, but mm -hmm. Japanese people make different cultures food. Right. Some of them are quite accurate. Like we've had some really good high-end French food, right? Yes. That tastes like food that we've had in France or better. Very good high-end Italian food that was even better yeah. than some of the stuff that we had in Italy. Ooh, dare we say. But they also make their own version of things. Yeah. Like for example, I recently did that video on Pudin. Yeah. Which is a uh, purin, which is pudin. pudding. Yeah, yeah, pudding. And everybody was like, so you're saying it's flan. Like the comment section is like. Like, is it flan? Is you it mean flan? flan? It's, it's flan. flan. It's flan. It's flan. No, it's not flan. It's not flan. It's purin. It's different. Purin. It doesn't taste the same. Mm -hmm. I know that it looks the same. I know that it seems similar. Mm -hmm. But when you come here, if you go to a convenience store and you see it, try it. It's going to be so different. Right. And that goes for a lot of other foods as well. Another great example is cocoa curry. Ah, uh, yes. Whenever people think about curry, the first thought is usually India. It's mm -hmm. Indian food. I, I don't want to have Indian food in Japan. I want to have Japanese food. Mm -hmm. But Japan makes their own version of curry that's very distinct from yeah. Indian curry. And if you were to skip out on cocoa curry, then there's just no point of you coming to Japan because Why it is the most this? important thing to do here. Huh? Number one rule, Coco Curry, Coco Curry. Why haven't we worked together yet? Why won't what you do I have? Help? Why won't you answer your phone? I'm calling. I'm leaving messages, faxes. You want me to leave faxes? Yeah, this is Coco Curry. Curry. New fax number. <laughs> yes. But that's Japan taking something that's not originally of their culture yeah. and making something amazing it's of it. It's brand new. It, yes. It's difficult to explain. It's not Indonesian. It's not Indian. It's not Thai. Right. It's Japanese. Other things you should try, we really recommend trying a bakery. The bakeries in Japan are really great mm -hmm. and they're very different. I especially love the quiche. Yes. So even if you go to like a small bakery, Ooh. they have some real good quiche. Really juicy and because they make yes. them with Japanese eggs, which are just divine. Fwa, Definitely fwa. try. Yep. A quiche. We've done an entire live stream on Italian food um, from convenience stores. Yes. So if you see the convenience store pasta and you're like going to an Airbnb or uh -huh. like some, you know, rental place and you we'll want it. We'll tell you the know, best one in that live stream if you haven't seen it. Go check it out. <laughs> check out the live stream. Check it out. If you love ice cream, I don't think you could get any better than Japan's Kremia. Yeah. I dare you to try. Honestly, try some Kremia here and tell me if you've had any ice cream that's better and then let's fight it out in the parking lot. And then I'll meet you out there and the hug you lot. really hard. A hard hug. hug. Because you've obviously been deeply hurt yes. if you don't appreciate how good this is. The point is no culture exists in a vacuum. Mm -hmm. Every culture influences each other and that's good. Try some of the other kinds of foods here in Japan. I don't think you're gonna be disappointed. They're really fun. Yeah, and um, like mayonnaise? Like mayonnaise? Something that you'd think that you have back home, you haven't. Please don't do it, Simon. No. Please don't do it. Hot tip. The next point's gonna be controversial for some of the more angry foreigners living here. Yes. Hub. We're saying the word hub right now, yes. which means nothing to a lot of you, and some of you just got like. Some of you have just cringed on the inside. Some might have unsubbed from but our channel. But just open your mind for a little Hold bit up here, for a okay? So, hub is a chain in Japan. Think yes. of it like an Applebee's or right. a Jack Astor's. Yes. It's just a pub, and it has typical like French fries and like mm -hmm. wings and chicken nuggets. Sure. And it's got like a British flag outside. Yes. Like and a stained glass kind of design. 
Japan. It's basically what I imagine Japanese people who have never left Japan have imagined that a pub would look like if、sure. they had only put it together from TV shows. Now, we're not saying that Hub is an amazing place. We're not even saying it's a great place. <laughs> it's arguable if it's even a good place. But the point is, we know some people that have traveled here to Japan and they've had extended vacations, and sometimes you get a little fatigue. Like, it's really you know? overwhelming. Yeah. And sometimes you feel like you want something familiar,、mm-hmm. something from back home. There's nothing wrong with wanting a little bit of a break. Yeah, and when you go to Hub, they usually have sports games on, so you can watch football, not the American kind. You the can watch、kind. the actual kind.、Yeah. You can watch like <laughs> rugby and other things. So it kind of gives you that feeling. And the only reason why we chose Hub is because it's a chain. So I、yes. feel like you'll be able to find it anywhere. Sure. But we're extending this idea of resting yourself a bit、yeah. for any kind of foreign place. Like if you go to Rapungi, you can go to a really good beer place where foreigners hang out, go to a coffee shop that's maybe、mm-hmm. more familiar. Yeah. Give your brain a little bit of a break from reading. Right. Eat something that you find familiar, recharge, and then head on out to tackle Japan. Don't be ashamed to try the foreigner stuff、yeah. here, all right? All right? Be kind to yourself. <laughs> Easy there. <laughs> Easy there. Ah,、oh, come on, you angry foreigners. I see you. Drink a beer. Step away from Reddit for a bit. Go outside and talk to some real people. Go meet Pikachu on the you'll street. You'll be, you'll, Shake you'll his be a lot、paw. better, all right? <laughs> hey, I hope that this video has eased some of your anxieties before you come here. You c o m e t h e f e e l girl. You c o m e t h e f e e l girl. Washboard abs. Okay. These are some misconceptions、Simon、about Japan. I'm just nervous about this video because he hasn't done it in a while. Thank so you、I'm、for listening to our TED Talk. Come to Japan. Have a good time.、Yeah. Be chill. Yeah. It's all right. Win's done. Win's done. Win's done. <laughs> also, we got so much Frontonians. Raptors number one. This video was actually a lot longer, but we ended up chopping it to make it a bit shorter. So there's two bonus videos. One's on Is Japan actually as quiet as everyone thinks it is? And are the Japanese people constantly offended? What other burning questions do you have about life in Japan? Let us know in the comment section below to give us inspiration on what to do next.